It's a tremendous covet to be, uh, to be speaking here in Yerushalayim and an absolute thrill to be speaking here in this uh, extraordinary binyan, uh, Sameach's new, new home. And I wish uh, Rav Schiller or Rav Shalayim should be able to be back uh, very soon to enjoy the island here uh, in this uh, wonderful, wonderful building that, that he built. I'd like to discuss uh, a piece of Gemara, Mesechtis Rosh Hashanah. Uh, the Gemara, for the most part, is well known. There's a machlaikis if the world was created in Tishrei or in Nisan. The dispute between Rebbe Leezer and Rabbi Yeshua as to when the world was created, either by Tishrei never Ha'ilam or by Nisan never Ha'ilam. Now, that dispute is not, is not the subject of my, uh, my talk here today, but rather I'd like to read the Gemara to you and, and make a point. The Gemara begins on Rosh Hashanah Daf Yudah Midbeis, Rabbi Eliezer Aimer, B'Tishrei Nivra Ha'ilam. The world was created in the month of Tishrei. B'Tishrei Nerl Du Avais. The Avais were, created, were born in Tishrei. B'Tishrei Mesu Avais. And the Avais died in Tishrei as well. The Pesach Noel Yitzchak, Yitzchak was the exception, he was born on Pesach. The Rosh Hashanah Nifkida Sara Rachel Vachana. And on Rosh Hashanah, Sara, Rachel, and Chana, all three had difficulty conceiving. And it was on Rosh Hashanah Nifkida Sara Rachel Vachana that Rachel, Sara, Rachel, and Chana, each of them, uh, the Gemara seems to say, they conceived on that day. I'd like to talk about this edition. Now, there's the first point, these are all uh, foundational events in, in, in the world. Betishrei Nivra Ha'ilam, Betishrei Naldu Avais, when the Avais were, were born, it's part of the foundation of the Bria. So the Gemara says that in Rosh Hashanah, Nifkada Sara Rachel Vachana, saying another part of the foundation of the Bria is the the fact that Sarah, Rachel, and Hannah are conceived after having difficulty uh, having children. The problem is that the, when the Gemara says that on Rosh Hashanah, Nifkada, Sarah, Rachel, Vachana, it does not mean that they conceived, that they, pregnancy began on Rosh Hashanah. It doesn't mean that at all. Rashi says, Rosh Hashanah Nifkada Sara, Ba Zechroinam Letaiva, Vinigzar Alehem Hirayain. Then in heaven, it was on Rosh Hashanah that it was Paskin that this coming year, Sarah would have a child, that Rachel would have a child, or that Chana would have a child. So it didn't even happen. The Gemara actually says later that uh, Sarah's pregnancy began on Sukkot, didn't even begin on Rosh Hashanah. So the title of the Gemara is on Rosh Hashanah Nifkada Sora Rachel Vachana. Then on Rosh Hashanah in heaven, they decree that in the coming year they would have children. Now that's a major problem. We understand that everyone is judged on Rosh Hashanah. Every pregnancy in Klal Yisrael is always Rosh Hashanah Nifkada. It's always Kepaskint on Rosh Hashanah, the events of the coming year. And therefore, it would seem to be totally, totally meaningless to say that Sarah also was Paskin on Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah is the, is the Yaim Adin for the entire world, for Jews, for non-Jews, for the whole Bria. And what's the Gemara saying? That on Rosh Hashanah, Nifkada, on Rosh Hashanah, it was, it was decreed in heaven they would have children. Uh, every decree for the coming year is, is on Rosh Hashanah. What's the, what's the point of this Gemara? I saw here, uh, here in Osameach, one of the Svarim who brings a teretz. It's not clear to me who he's quoting, but he says the following. He says, no, Rosh Hashanah typically is the day of Ksiva, when the judgment of the coming year is written. The decrees are not 
sealed until the coming Yom Kippur. So the Gemara is telling us a Chiddush. For most people, on Rosh Hashanah, a, a, a judgment is passed, and in Yom Kippur it's sealed. But Rosh Hashanah, Nifkeda, Sara, Rachel, Vachana, for them, the judgment was finalized on Rosh Hashanah. Which means to say, the Gemara says elsewhere in Rosh Hashanah that, well known, that on the Yom Adin, there are three uh, groups on Rosh Hashanah, Sadikim, Bainanim, and Rishayim. The righteous are, have the final Psaq on Rosh Hashanah, for Taiv. Rishayim have the final Psaq on Rosh Hashanah the other way. Bainanim Tluyim Ba'imdim. The Gemara says the Bainanim are left hanging to see how things work out until Yom Kippur. So the Teretz is, Ah, oh, Rosh Hashanah, Nifka, Dasar, Rachel, Vachana. Then on Rosh Hashanah, their Psak Din was not only written, but it was sealed also on Rosh Hashanah. And uh, therefore, it's telling us something. It's telling us that their, their Din was Gepaskin then as well. Now, this terrace is the only terrace I ever saw in the Kasha. And it's troubling. Well, Yashkayach, you tell me a Chiddush. You know, on Rosh Hashanah, they had Tzadikim, they had Bainim, they had Rishon. You should know, Sarah was not a Bainani. Sarah was a Tzadikis. Okay, Yashkayach, nice to know. Rachel, not a Bainani. Rachel was a Tzadikis. Chana, not a Bainani, but a Tzadikis. Okay, I guess it's nice to let me know. But what's it doing here? What does it have to do with the foundational events of the world that the world was created on Tishrei, the others were born on Tishrei, and Rosh Hashanah, not only every person who's going to have a child in the coming year, it's written on Rosh Hashanah, and for the three of them it was sealed on Rosh Hashanah. They were not Bainanim. Again, it, doesn't, it seems to be missing in the time, in the, in the, in the depth of the meaning of, of, uh, of, of Rosh Hashanah, Nifkeda, Sarah, Rachel, Vachana. You said Hadavar, though, is very important and found, foundational for Klal Yisrael. What the Gemara is really telling us is that Klal Yisrael is founded, the foundation of Klal Yisrael, the Psak that Sarah would have children, is based on her being a tzaddik, is not being a Bainani. A Bainani, I guess we would say, means an average person, which is not totally accurate, as we'll see. But what we're saying here is that the foundation of Klal Yisrael is not for Bainanim. It's not for people that are not committed. It's not for people who are 50-50. The foundation of Klal Yisrael is for people who are Rosh Hashanah people. Already to have a psak din on Rosh Hashanah. In Parshish Re'ei, the first Sephorno in Parshish Re'ei says the following Re'ei anaychi naisin lifnechem hayayim es habracha ves haklala. First Pasuk in the Parsha. Listen to the Sephorno. Habitu ure'ei. Shalayiya in yonecha al oifin beinani. Most people are satisfied with being average, with being bainity, with being somewhere in the middle of the road. Meshur Rabbeinu tells Kla Yisrael, Re'eya neichi neisim lefnechem hayayim brachel es habrachel ves haklala. Says the Sepharno, a neichi neisim klala u bracha vehem shtei ketzavais. There are two extremes. Rabbi Nisham is telling Ka Yisrael, your commitment is not, HaKadosh Baruch is not looking for Bainanim. HaKadosh Baruch is not looking for average people in Ka Yisrael. Rabbi Nisham is looking for people who are committed. You should know, there's Bracha and there's Klala. Either pursue Bracha, or you can end up pursuing Klala, God forbid. The goal of being a former Yid as a Bainani, as an average, as a middle of the road, 
That's not Klal Yisrael. Rosh Hashanah, Nifka, Dasar, Rachel, Vachana. It was a pekida not for Bainanim. It was a pekida for people who want to excel, for people who want to do, who want to do well in Avaidas Hashem. Klal Yisrael is not for mediocrity. Klal Yisrael is for people who, who are ready and willing to be part of a Klal Yisrael that's not a Bainanim. The Gemara says on Rosh Hashanah, Bainanim Tuluyim Vaimdim. The Bainanim, Rosh Hashanah, the, the righteous are written for life. Bainanim, the average, Tluyim Vaimdim Ad Yom Kippur. So it means you've got to wait to Yom Kippur. Chaim Shmulevitz, in the first of the Sichas Musa for Tavshin Lamed Beis, he writes, no, that's not what it means. Bainani, Tluyim Vaimdim, he means Tluyim. It's like you have the noose around the neck. Vaimdim, and they stand the person up on a chair. And like they're ready to push the chair away, tuluyim ba'imdim. That's how he pictures the bainin and tuluyim ba'imdim. Not the way we usually, we don't usually get that image given to us in yeshiva. Bainin and tuluyim ba'imdim. He quotes the altar of Navardik, for whom it's a very appropriate uh, imagery. Bainin and tuluyim ba'imdim. The goal in life has to be more than, what does it mean more than bainin? I remember once, Somebody had a uh, crockpot shayla, Shabbos shayla, in my house when I had little children in the house, and uh, somebody would knock at the door in the middle of the Leil Shabbos Suda, the boys would say, oh, Cholin shayla. Who knocks on the rub's door in the middle of the shul? And you kiss your shayla by Shachris in the morning, it's got to be a Cholin shayla. So somebody had a Cholin shayla. They had to unplug the crockpot before Shabbos to stick it into a Shabbos clock and then forgot to plug it back in. You want to know if you can get a guy to plug it in. So I took out the, the Mishnah Brewer and I showed him the Bir Alacha. So I read to him, the Bir Alacha says, Bishas Hatchak, it's mutter. He said, Oh, Baruch Hashem. Goodbye. Bishas <laughs> Bye. Baruch Hashem. <laughs> and that's a Bainani. So he's serving Hashem. Bainani, average. Average is fine. You know, Bishas Hatchak, it's mutter. That's a, that's. The, you know, it's good enough for him. That, that's, he's, not looking for, he's not looking for more than that. I remember, I was once uh, standing talking to somebody, and he took out a sandwich, and he started eating. I said, why don't you wash? There's a sink right here. He says, ah, you yeshiva guys, you're very from, you wash every time. Now, people never wash. On Shabbos, I'm always smacked to wash, and the weekdays, sometimes I wash, sometimes I don't wash, you know. Benedi, you know, he's somewhere, he's somewhere in the middle. I asked him if, you know, he tells his wife the same thing. You know, some people are in love. Some people are divorced. And I'm somewhere in the middle. Some days I feel like getting divorced. Some days I feel like being married to you. You know, like I'm a bainity, you know, like. Bainanim tuluyim va'imdim. Kla Yisrael is not looking for bainanim. If, uh, if you ask shidduch information, you call somebody, you know, I heard about this person, I want to date. What's he like? So you imagine he's average. I said, learning average. Midas Tavis, a Benedi, average. Oh, sounds good. My daughter's a Benedi too, so we'll let them go out together. <laughs> my father once told me his son was dating. He's very worried. I said, why? Because I, he likes this girl. He's dating her. And I asked him about her. Everything I asked, he said, she's excellent. She's bright. She's smart. She's capable. I said, so what's the problem? So he says, it's not a match for my son. She's bright, she's capable, it's not a match for my son. So tell him, don't worry. After he gets married, he won't feel she's so bright and she's so capable. It's, it's part of the dating process. But the point I'm making, the Sephano is saying that Ain't a Kaddish Baruch Chafetz Bebeinanim. It's not, the Klai Yisro was not begun for people who are sort of half in and half out. The goal in Avedis Hashem is to do something completely, to do something totally. When I was learning Yeshua, I came to a Pasik, I knew I'd have a very hard time with, with, uh, with today's, uh, today's society. There's an episode in Yeshua Perik Yud where after a war, 
the kings, the enemy kings are captured. And Yeshua says to the, the leaders of Kal Yisrael, Simu es ha Put your feet on the necks of these kings before you kill them. Put your feet on their necks. And we're not comfortable with the, with the barbarism of it, the, uh, uh, the harshness of it. War, you can't be average. You can't be a Rachman when you go to war. You go to war, you have to be ruthless for your side, ruthless for your cause. Jews are not good at being, being ruthless. You know, the Medrash says, you know, Klai Yisrael crossed the, crossed the Yardin. Yeshua stopped them in the middle of the Yardin. And he says, it's a site, Gemara and Sait at Aflamidalit, Oidom be Yardin, Omelem Yeshua. What's he telling them in the middle of the Yardin with the water piling up over their heads? He says, Do'u alma atem oivrim ase Yardin. Know why you're crossing this Yardin. You should do battle with those who live here in, their, in Canaan. If you do it, it's a deal. And if not, the water is going to drown you. That's what he had to make them promise? To go to war? Jews are Rachmanim. Jews have a very hard time going to war. Jews don't make good mass killers or mass murderers. It's just not in our blood. Yeshua had to make them promise. Don't go to it with mediocrity. Go to it full, with full force, with all your energy, with everything you can do. In most cities here in Eretz Yisrael, there's a Rechov HaLamed Hay. The Rechov ha, what's the Rechov HaLamed Hay? It's... Uh, during the War of Independence in 48, there were a group of 35 uh, Israeli soldiers who were sort of making their way around to, to attack the enemy from, from behind. And as they were sneaking through the fields, they came upon some Arab shepherds. And the shepherds discovered them. They discovered the shepherds. They should have killed them. They had Rahmanis. Jews have Rahmanis. And instead, they just tied them up. And they went on the way, and the, the Arabs made, uh, uh, found a way to get out of their uh, being tied up, and they told, they told about these 35, and the 35 were killed uh, by your enemies. Chov HaLamed Hay. When you're in Muhammad, it's yet to say, either you're in it or you're not in it. You can't be in Lachanma full of Rahmanas. The same thing is true with the Muhammad with the Yetzahara. Vagueness and commitment is not what Klal Yisrael is meant to be. Klal Yisrael has to be a Klal Yisrael that's committed. Not to be not to be the average people, but to be more than the average. The idea that Rosh Hashanah Nifkeda Sara Rachel Vachana is Rosh Hashanah Nifkeda, not in this man habeinim. The guy. And the minigan in many parts of the old Yerushalmi community here in Yerushalayim is that the night of Rosh Hashanah, you don't say, L'shana toiva tikasei v'sichaseim. In Chutz Laretz, we all say, L'shana toiva tikasei v'sichaseim, and whatever is added to it. And it says some Shulch Laruch, it brings such a minig. The minig hagra, and in some parts of Yerushalayim, is to say, L'shana toiva Tikasev, and that's it. Now you'll know what it means if you tell someone Tikasev is Yechasev, and they're correct, you have no idea what they're talking about. The Groshita is that everyone has a Chasima on Yom Kippur. Whether you live or not, for everybody, it's written on Rosh Hashanah and it's sealed on Yom Kippur. 
And the gross seems to be our Hanhaga. If we believe that, that those for whom the scales are 51, 49, are finalized on Rosh Hashanah, we would seem to be holding that the whole Aserus Yemei Tshuva and Yem Kippur is all on a suffix. Just in case I'm a Benini, I'll do Tshuva and Aserus Yemei Tshuva. Otherwise, well, I guess always got to do Tshuva, but you know, it's not so, it's not so urgent. And the Gross says, no, the Gross says that on the Gashmias, on life, on Parnosa, everybody has a Chasim on Yom Kippur. I, the Gemara says, Shloisha Kitas Liyam Adin. The Gemara says, only Beninim Tuliyam Vayimnim. So the Gross says, that's in Ruchnius. That's in whether this year gives you a Schus Loyalam Abba. It's in Ruchnius. Uh, Stipler in Kreine Degrasse has a, a letter entitled Shloisha Svarim Niftachim. He doesn't quote the Gra by name, but he explains the idea. In Pachad Yitzchak on Rosh Hashanah, in the beginning of Maimur Yudalid, he brings the gra, the, this Gra as well. So Gra says that the whole Beninim, Tuliyim Vaimdim, is all Ruchnius, which fits well. What we're talking about here, for Shashara Nifkida, Sara, Rachel, Vachana, is all talking about the Ruchnius of Kla Yisrael. Not to be Beninim, in, Beninim in, in the spiritual commitment of Kla Yisrael. There's a problem. Anytime you're going to have a group of people, uh, some people are going to be Bainanim. If you go to the, you know, the Harvard of law schools, anytime you have a group of people, some people excel and some people are weaker and some people are somewhere in the middle. So even if everyone's super excellent, there's going to, what does it mean? Uh, no Bainanim? Bainanim doesn't mean compared to other people. The Yamadin, each person stands by himself. Bainanim doesn't mean how many blat gemaria could learn. Bainanim does not mean how much hasmada you have. It doesn't even mean how much kavana you have in Davin. We're talking about commitment, about a commitment to the ideals of the Torah Kedoshim. We're talking about Avas Hashem. It all comes down to an Avas Hashem. What is Ava? Ava is a feeling of connection, of a commitment, a love. Avas Atayra, Avas Hashem, Avas Yisrael. There's no such thing as a Benini in Ava. You can't love someone mediocre, in a mediocre way. You can't love somebody without a full commitment. If you wash for Amaitzi because of an Avas Hatayra, because you have an Ava for living a Torah life, so you don't tell yourself that oh, I do it sometimes. You know, some people this way, some people that way, and I'm somewhere safe in the middle. That's not an Ava. It doesn't create. It's not an Ava. The idea of mediocrity and Avodas Hashem is a painful piece of of what I see as the experience of Chutz La'aretz Nikas. I see it more and more in Chutz La'aretz. I, I deal with, uh, with young men and young women who are getting married. Over the last few years, I, I get a call a month before the chasna. Uh, do, I have, do I have to fast on my wedding day? I heard it's not a chiv. That's what you're worried about? Preparing for your wedding? Do I have to fast? Well, do I have to wash a Cheva Brachas? Do I have to? That's what you're worried about. Do I have to wash a Cheva Brachas? You're going to Yechasta. It's just, it's mind-boggling. That's the question. That's the question you have ahead of time. It, it, it points to a certain mediocrity and, and commitment. Do I have to? People tell me, do I have to give Meiser on this money? What do you mean, do you have to? Do you get to give money on this money? My son, this money. Do I have to? It's like a sentence. It's a punishment. God gave you money. Do I have to give? What do you mean, do I have to give? Do I have to? Kali Yisrael thrives on people 
who are committed to the ideals of Teresino Akdaisha. To the ideals, to, to, the, to the commitment, to the feeling, to the heritage. Nobody wants to be a Bainini in love for his family. Nobody wants to say, my goal is to be a Bainini and how much I love my children. There's no such thing. People want to excel. Some people excel more, some people accept less. But the commitment? Nobody wants less. And that idea of being not satisfied, so the Siferno tells us, don't be a Benini. There are two extremes. Either you're in or you're out. The idea that when the going gets rough, I'll see you later, that's not a friend. That's a friend. A friend when the going is good and when the going is rough, that's not a friend. There's no avas chaveirim. If you have a friend who, you know, it's all good until. There's a wealthy fellow in Flappish. He was about stuck at two. And he lost his money. He once commented, he said, I don't understand. People don't come to me for money anymore. I understand, I don't have money. But they used to come to me for eights. How come they don't come to me anymore for advice? They used to come to me for advice. You know something? They didn't come to you for advice. They weren't your friends. Those are not your friends. They were, there, they were, they were coming to you because you had money. Ava, if you love somebody and he's in trouble, you love him even more. You draw closer to him. If you have a friend and you're a real friend and you hear he's going through a hard time, he has a Leoleno, a broken engagement, a divorce, you pick up the phone and you call him. You're a real friend. Most friends, he's going through things, stay away. That's not Ava. Ava is, you call him. You tell him, I know you're going through a hard time. I want you to know I'm thinking of you. That's Avas Yisrael. You want to be an, uh, have an Avas Yisrael? That's Avas Yisrael. What, you know what's Avas HaToyra? Chaim Shmulevit says Avas HaToyra is any mitzvah. The time you do it when it's most difficult, that shows your Ava. When, when it's the most difficult time, the hardest time to be able to wash Rabbi Maitzi, and you, you, know, you, you go out of your way to wash, that shows your commitment. That's the pshat, Yehei maskurtach shleima meis Hashem. It says by Rus. Abayah said to Rus, your schar should be shalem. You should get complete schar from Hashem. What do you mean? Everyone gets complete schar. He said, no, Rus, you went through poverty and loneliness and you still stuck with it? Your whole life when you serve Hashem, the fact you did it when it was hard, that's the level of schar you have. That's the commitment you have. That's the ava you have. And that idea is the, is the goal when we come to the Yom and Nairam. We're not going to become tzaddikim over El. We're not going to suddenly uh, become a god ladar over the Aser Simei but commitment, commitment to the Rabbi Nishalayim, and that's how we renew when these days come. A commitment, we want to do things right, HaKadosh Baruch We say to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Ritzeneinu laseis Ritzeinecha. Our Ratzin is to do what you want. The idea of commitment, the idea of being a Benini, it should, it should be disgusting to a person. Just like you, imagine you open up a store, a new, new, new set of stores in, fly, in, uh, in Yerushalayim. Everything bain, hakol bainini. Everything average quality, average prices, average everything. They have plenty of stores like that, but they don't advertise. They don't, they don't brand themselves as bainini, and they, they have people who are happy to be somewhere in the middle of the crowd. If Palm once told me in Yiddish, it seems it's a Yiddish saying, Zognish. Which means, like, don't hide behind the fact whatever will happen to the Jewish people will happen to me too. You know, I'm, I'm somewhere in the middle of the pack and, uh, you know, I'll just go wherever Klai Yisrael goes. No, you, you have to be 
that which you could be. There was a, an incident about 20 years ago with a couple in South America, and she wanted to move to Eretz Yisrael. And he had a business there, he wanted to stay there, and uh, they, they had an argument. So they agreed, they'll ask Rabbi Yosha for a psak. They'll do whatever he says. So they came to Rabbi Yosha, now it's a beferish mission in Ksuvis, that a wife could force her husband to move to Eretz Yisrael. So they came to Rabbi Yosha, and Rabbi Yosha asked her, why do you want to move to Eretz Yisrael? And she said, because here in Eretz Yisrael I have friends, and in South America I have no friends, I'm very lonely. He paskined that, he doesn't, that the couple doesn't, doesn't have to move. He said, you only, the halach is of moving to Eretz Yisrael, if you're moving for Avas Eretz Yisrael, for Kedusha Eretz Yisrael, if you're moving to go to Eretz Yisrael, if you're moving to go to a neighborhood where you have friends and that happens to be in Eretz Yisrael, that was the psak that was spread in the name of Rebel Yashiv, and it's a Pnei Yeshua. On the sugi of Yisha Eretz Yisrael and Kufi Ralf and Ksubis, Pnei Yeshua says it. He says, going to Eretz Yisrael is a mitzvah for those who go with naked Dushasai. They go because it's a place that a person will, uh, can be Shomer bin Achet. That's the mitzvah to go to Eretz Yisrael from Abbas Eretz Yisrael. Some people say they want to go to Eretz Yisrael. It's not safe in America. I tell them, when it's raining outside, you're not allowed to go hide in a shul. You're supposed to go into a shul because it's a shul, not because it's, uh, it's a place where you have a roof over your head. Eretz Yisrael, to those who come here, for Kedusha's Eretz Yisrael, it opens its arms. Eretz Asher Avoneha Barzel, the people committed to Eretz Yisrael, they're like iron. The Gemara says, Eretz Asher Avoneha Barzel, Eilor Tamidi Chamisha Eretz Yisrael. Eretz Yisrael is a place which opens itself to an Ava for, for Klal Yisrael, for an Ava Satayra, for those who want, who want it, those who search it. This is the place. It's becoming more and more that the mediocrity of Chutz is, is contrasted to the search for excellence by many here in Eretz Yisrael. I don't say everybody finds the key to Avedis Hashem, but it's here, it's in the ear. It's in the avir. It's in Eretz Yisrael, Dike Yidin, who, who more and more, I took to, to so-called typical Eretz Yisrael, Dike Yidin, they want to do things like Hatchila. To them it says, Bishas Hatchak, it doesn't mean you're supposed to do it. Bishas Hatchak means that you don't do it unless. I want to say to Pam, if I have a shayla, and the psak is that you chayiv lotzei sidei shemayim, the bezin can't force you to do it, but uh, lotzei sidei shemayim, you have a moral obligation to do it. If someone asks me for a yes or no answer, what do I say? He said, of course you tell me you have to do it. Chayiv lotzei sidei shemayim means you do it. It's all about an ava satayra. It's all about a commitment. The idea of hiding behind being a Benini, it's the beauty of Yerushalayim is Yerushalayim is a city that doesn't breed mediocrity. In many ways, it breeds extremism. As you can see on many of the, the signs that spring up all over. One summer, I should have taken a picture. I was here with my boys many summers ago, and one of the Pashkavilin, one of these signs was up, and it said in big letters, Godel Hashalim. I'd never seen this in Eretz Yisrael. Never saw a sign. It said, Godol HaShalom. As we got closer, we read the words underneath. It said, Yesh Mafriyin Es HaShalom. There's some of those. Hakei Aysam. Redaif Aysam. He said, beat them up. Chase them. Take them out of the city. No, that was the sign. Eretz Yisrael. The sense of Avas HaShem is, is extraordinary. There's a Gemara in Bab Metziah. In Elu Metziah, it describes the system by which uh, lost objects were claimed. 
So the Gemara says that people would announce it, announce lost objects uh, on the Shalish Regalim, on the three Evan Taivim, when all Jews came up. So the Gemara says, Evan Tayan Hayabi Yerushalayim. There was a stone that was called the Evan Tayan, I guess the, 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 the Claimer Stone. And Kol Misha of Dolay Aveda Nifno Lasham. If somebody lost something, I guess something of significance, he would go there. Evan Tayan Hayabi Yerushalayim. There is still such a stone in Yerushalayim. There's still such a place. We're in such a place right now. Call me Aveda, a person who can't find himself. Nifna Lasham. You come here and you look for it. You claim it. A person who can't find his Nishama. Person who can't find his me. Person who can't find his Yiddish guy. Nifna Lasham. You come here. It's available. It's here. You have to connect. Too many people get bogged down with the idea of comparing themselves in how well they learn, comparing themselves in how much they remember in learning comparing themselves and how, how many hours of Hasmada, these are all crucial parts in Avedis Hashem. But the key to Avedis Hashem is Avas Hashem, Avas Atayra, is commitment. Commitment on a complete scale to do things Lechat Now sometimes you might flop, you might not do a Lechat It may happen. It can happen that you won't do things Lechat But your commitment has to be to do things Lechat your commitment in a marriage has to be to do things l'chatchila. Your commitment to friends has to be to do things l'chatchila. Sometimes you, sometimes you fail. But the idea, the commitment, and that's what it's about. And we stand the parsha of Re'eya, Neichi, Neislof, Neichem, Hayyayim, Esabracha, Vesaklala, which Maishu Rabbeinu repeats in many different languages throughout, throughout the Varim, at least the next four parshas of the Varim. Says the Siparno says, God is not looking for Bainanim. Nobody is looking for Bainanim. No one's looking to hire somebody and say, Well, uh, you do a good job? You say, I'll do an average job. You hire someone who's committed to doing an average job? It doesn't work that way. Rabbi is not looking for Bainanim. The Gemara on Tezainam and Beis and Rosh Hashanah, which tells us, that there are three Svarim, the Sefer of Tzadikim, the Sefer of Rishon, the Sefer of Beninim. And the Gemara says, Beninim Pluyim Vahimdim. As I said, some people are just very comfortable being Beninim. I would encourage them to read the Gemara later. Because there are two Dinim. There's the Din of Rosh Hashanah. And then there's the Din, after a person passes from this world, after 120 years, he has a Din on his whole life. And there too, it says there are tzaddikim, rishayim, and beninim. Why does it say about the beninim? Beninim yardim legehenim umitzavtzefin ve'olim. Beninim go down to gehenim. What's mitzavtzefin? Sayekin ubeichin b'teich yisurim. You want to be a benini? You want to be a benini? A goal. We go into an El, into a Yom Neiroim. It's commitment. It's not about perfection and action. It's about perfection and commitment. Very few people can achieve perfection in their behavior. Very few people, if anybody. But to be committed, to hold dear every hanhaga, every behavior that Shulchan Aruch obligates us to do, to hold the dear, to hold it chashiv, to believe in Divrei Chazal, it's going to come to Yom Adin, and a man and his friend may, by chance, come to the Day of Judgment at the same time. And uh, so call them Ruben and Shimon. They dive together every day. So they have the scales. Everything's being put on. Now, they're bringing the schar for davening shachras. 
So Rumi says, yeah, I dab a minion every day. They bring in a pile of schar and they put it on the scale. They say, okay, Shimon. He said, I dab a shach with the same minion. They bring in a pile that's 10 or 20 times as big and they put it on the scale. He says, hey, what's going on? We dab the same minion. At the same amount of kavana, well, why is he getting 20 times as much? So the angel says, you know, as I'll say, if you're from Dasara Rishainim, you're the first 10, you get schar of everybody. So he was one of the first 10. You were, you know, you were 13, 14. So the man says, Mime Chazal said it, they really meant it? They really meant he gets schar? If I they really meant it, I would have been, been the first 10. They really meant that? So I want to tell you, they really mean it. Whatever Chazal say about someone who's Mahad, they really mean it. They really mean it. Can everyone be the first ten? Not everyone can be the first ten. But Chazal mean it when they say these things. And so, the strangest thing to me is that I'm here in Yerushalayim, and I have to tell you the feeling that is in Evan Hatoyan is my own feeling. I feel that when I come back here, as I've been coming back every summer but one since uh, I've been here since 96, it's a couple of years. And uh, since I think 97 or 98, I've been here in Arsameach. I've seen wonderful people pass through, some with whom I have a lasting relationship. And... Uh, Daniel Scheinfeld was here for many years. When he moved back, he came to my house for Shabbos. And in shul, he sat down next to me, next to the Rav. On the other side of me was someone else. The other person has a daughter. He said, you know, he looks like a fine boy. Maybe he'll go out with my daughter. And they got married. All of Daniel's friends come to me for Shabbos. <laughs> and, uh, you know, something... I feel when I come here, I find myself, why am I going back? I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I feel that that's, uh, that's what I'm supposed to be doing at, at this point in my life. I feel that, that that's the Ratzin Hashem. But uh, my heart is here. I need to say I'm Arav. I'm, I'm not here. My heart is here. Yerushalayim is a place where you connect with excellence, with people who want to be excellent in Avedis Hashem. You come here, People eat Malava Malka. You, I walk in the street, I hear even some people even sing Zemiris in Malava Malka. In America, right? people eat Malava Malka religiously are those who go to their pizza stores. <laughs> you haven't heard any Zemiris there yet. And people ask, do you have to? Shal Shudah, Sudah Shlishis, do you have to wash for the third Sudah? Yaitza, I heard you Yaitza, Mazainis. This guy's eating a whole day. And... Uh, and sometimes he's sitting in shul, everyone's washing, no, he's not washing, he's just going to eat a piece of cake. That's the way you serve Hashem? That's, a, that's an ava for Shabbos? A piece of cake? And people are going to come to Elam Abba, and they'll get Elam Abba, they did the, the tzaddikim, Elam Abba, and they'll shove them to a room. Um, this room is, this is what, this is Elam Abba? They say, Bishas HaTchak, he could be Yitz Elam Abba with this room also. <laughs> Excellence and commitment. That's our goal. We're coming to, to Rosh Hashanah. Excellence and commitment. Let's hope. Let's hope we could do it. I try before I leave Eretz Yisrael to inhale very strongly and hold my breath as long as I can and to try to keep the Avir of Eretz Yisrael as much as possible. Let's hope. We should all be Zaycha. All the shuls and chutzlar should pick themselves up and come here. Someone asked me where all the shuls and chutzlar are going to fit. I tell them, no, all the shawarma places in Yerushalayim are going to pick themselves up and go to Chutz Laaretz, and all the shuls are going to come here. Let's hope we should be zeichet to see it to the Meher of Yemen. Thank you. <laughs>